Please. Thank you, Mr. Yeah, Mr. These men, not deserving it, were not shot for no reason at all. There has to be a reason. Shouldn't there, in fact, have been something? Would you not want something? Something that if you have to convict a person of murder, you can say at least there was something there that, to me, ties him in. You will never, ever, as much as you might want to, be able to say, that gun, it's which gun, that silencer, which silencer, or whose bullets. You'll never be able to say that. Can you be sure? Because if you are not sure, the case is not proved beyond reasonable doubt. And the system that brings each of us here to this courtroom requires verdicts of not guilty. This was a trial based solely on circumstantial evidence. And Justice Naser, in his summing up, was to compare this type of evidence to being like strands of a rope. One strand wouldn't hold much weight, three or four would. The case had to be decided on facts, not feelings. If you think he possibly is the killer, if you think he probably is the killer, that's not enough to convict. The Crown undertakes to prove that he is. But if you think there's no reasonable doubt about it, that he's the killer, you should do your duty and convict him. If you think there's reasonable doubt, equally it's your duty to acquit him. The jury, in fact, could do neither. After three days of deliberation closeted in this room, they were a hung jury. In the second trial, the defence mounted a stronger challenge by calling two Australian experts who disputed the Crown's forensic evidence linking the fatal bullets with John Barlow's gun, silencer and ammunition. Again, after nearly three days deliberation, the jury returned unable to reach a unanimous verdict. In the third and final trial, the jury had to decide between an American expert who said the links existed between the scene bullets and the tip gun and ammunition, or an Australian who said the tests used to show the links were shoddy. After two days, the jury returned. This time, there was a verdict. You have been a successful senior businessman which makes the acts of which you have been convicted the more remarkable. The fact that you killed these two men in the way they were killed indicates that you are a dangerous man. And I believe that it is proper for me to require that you be kept in custody for a long time. On December 15, 1995, John Robert Barlow was sentenced on both charges of the murder of Eugene and Jean Thomas to life in prison with a minimum non-parole period of 14 years. <laughs>